Let's look at how to use Excel to perform the single exponential smoothing technique in order to forecast a certain time series. So here we have the time series we're going to forecast. It's just been labeled Y. It's over 24 periods. Now the periods here are simply labeled 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, but in reality of course you, they would be annual, quarterly, monthly and so on. Uh, the first nine values constitute the training set here and the next uh, re remaining periods are the test set. Okay, so in order to begin the process we have to initialize it by setting the initial forecast equal to the actual value. As you can see here, it tells us to set F1, the forecast in the first period, equal to the actual value. That's so we can then uh, initialize the process. So let me put a formula in here to do that. So it's equal to, the first forecast is equal to the actual value. Now to generate the remaining forecast we use this, this formula. This tells us that the forecast in the next period, which in this case is period 2, is equal to alpha times the value of the data in the previous uh, period, in this case period 1, plus 1 minus alpha times the previous forecast. Now alpha is the key parameter of this uh, process, of this technique. It's normally some value between 0 and 1, not including those two. And initially we'll just set it at some arbitrary value, such as, as I've done here, 0 0.4. But any value between 0 and 1, but not but, but not, not all 1, will do. Later on we'll find the value of alpha which minimizes the uh, errors and, and therefore improves, uh, makes the forecast as good as possible. Specifically we're going to choose the value of alpha which minimizes the mean squared error. So let's generate the other forecast now, firstly for period 2. So it's equal to alpha. Now of course we must always use that value in K2. So I need to make that absolute. Because the F4 function key will put the dollar signs in. So it's alpha times yt, in other words, the value of the data in the previous period, plus 1 minus alpha, again making that absolute, and note the brackets of course, so the, sub the subtraction occurs first, times the forecast in the previous period. Okay, that will create the forecast for period 2. I can then copy that formula down to do all the rest. Okay, now I need to work out the errors so that I can square them, find the mean squared error, and then try and minimize it. Now the error, of course, is the difference between the actual value and the forecast. It's the forecast error. So let's work out the first one. So it's the error is equal to the actual value minus the forecast. Initially, of course, that's zero because we set the forecast, the first forecast, equal to the actual value. Now to do the rest, copy the formula. Okay, now some, of course, are positive because the actual value is above the forecast, so make negative because the forecast, uh, the actual value is below the forecast. Now we need to square them. That's the formula to do the first one, and now the rest. Okay, now I want the mean of these, the mean squared error. So I'll use the average function, of course, to find the mean. Okay, so at the moment we have a mean squared error of 345.39. Now that's almost certain not to be the minimum one because it's very unlikely that by chance we chose the particular value of alpha which minimizes that. So this, what I want to do now is to find the value of alpha which will minimize the mean squared error. Now this involves a, an optimization process 
Uh, specifically, I want to mini choose find the value of alpha which minimizes the mean squared error. Now, to do that, I need some uh, optimization procedure. Unfortunately, Excel has an add-in called Solver, which will carry out this kind of optimization uh, process. Now, this Solver, uh, if it's loaded up, you'll find under the Data menu, as you see, I've got this already um, loaded up. If it's not there, then you need to add the Solver add-in. Now, to do that, you go to the Insert menu, and where it says My Add-ins, you click down arrow and then choose Manage Other Add-ins. This will then bring up the Options box with, uh, with Add-ins chosen. You go down to the Notice. As you can see, I've got the Solver add-in already loaded. If you haven't got it, it won't appear there yet. Go down to Manage Excel Add-ins, click the Go button. Click the Solver Add-in box, as you can see, as I've already seen, I've already got it, so it's already clicked. Click that, click OK, and it will load up and then be available under the Data menu. So going back here to Data, I'm choosing Solver. Well, actually, before I do that, it's a good idea to click into the MS Mean Squared Error uh, cell, because that's what we're trying to minimize. So again, going back to Data and Solver. Now, this brings up the dialog box for the Solver add-in. And normally, the, it's, it's very intelligent. It, it, it's often able to work out what it is you actually want to do um, without having to put the things in yourself. But if, and in this case, I think it probably has done that, but if not, it's very easy to set it up. So first of all, you need to check that the objective, the cell with the objective in is correct, which in this case is K6. That's why I clicked on this to begin with, so it picked that up. Now we want to minimize what's in K6, the mean squared error. So minimize is what we want. Again, that's automatic, that's already been chosen. If not, of course, just choose it. We want to minimize this by changing, well, alpha, which is in K2, and again, it has guessed that correctly. Um, again, if not, simply click in here and then select K2. So you should you often find that the solver add-in um, very intelligently works out what it is you're probably wanting to do, but if not, it's very easy to tell it. There's no constraints here. This, in fact, this solver add-in is a, is a sophisticated add-in which will do various types of optimization with or without constraints. Here it's very, we've got no constraints on the actual value that alpha is allowed to take. Um, so we can simply leave that alone. The uh, method is fine. There's nothing else we need to change here. Let's just click solve and see what we get. And there we have it. It has found that the value of alpha which minimizes the mean squared error is 0 0.65 for 218. So we can keep that. And notice now that the mean squared error has gone down from, it was about 345 before, now to 298. So we've optimized the um, forecasts by minimizing the mean squared error over all the data. Now, to generate forecasts, now all we need to do is to keep going with this formula here that generates the forecast. So all I need to do is to copy this down one more period. Which gives me a forecast of 56.22. I'm going to put that in red just to make it clear that's a forecast. And in fact, as far as single exponential smoothing goes, that's it. It's only designed really for one step ahead forecasts. If you want any other forecast, then in effect, they will be just the same. It's what's called a flat forecast. So it really only is, does forecast the first one period ahead. So if I want the rest, they're going to be the same. So what I could do here is simply copy this and then paste that value not the formula, because it will keep updating it, paste the values 
into here. So I need to right click, choose Paste Special and Values, and that will put the uh, same values here. As I say, it's a flat forecast. The forecast is really on for the first period, first forecast period, the rest are just the same. So that shows how to generate uh, the forecast using six single exponential smoothing.